question. A man marries 20 women in his village, but is not charged with polygamy because it's against the law here to marry more than one person. So why not? Any ideas? This is Greenshaw High School, Sutton, where GCSE maths results are on the up. For maths teacher Dennis Garvey and his students, it's been far from an easy ride. I think children are put off maths at an early age, uh, not by anybody in particular, but because they find it difficult and they're scared by it. They're scared by the terminology, they're scared by the fact that they've got to do skills that they feel they cannot do. It. All it takes, even with the most challenging students, is to win them over slowly but surely. You never win them all over at once, but once you win one, you win two, once you win two, you win three, and eventually they all come on side. So, Carl, what's the answer to that question? Uh, he's a priest. It's spot on, because he's the priest that marries, marries them. That oh, yeah. marries them, yes? Well done, that's fantastic. Well, I think the first 10 minutes of any lesson is, is the key to the lesson success. Uh, I tend to get them in and have a, a lateral thinking type puzzle on the board. Lessons have to be sort of chunked up, short, sharp chunks, but particularly for students who do lack confidence and may not be the most able. Uh, you do some work, you go through it, they get feedback immediately. So if the radius is five, what's the diameter? Good, 10 is perfect, well done. And all the time the feedback is positive. Everything then falls into place and they want to do well. But it is just a positive reinforcement with them all the time. It's hard work. <laughs> well done. Not many people are going to spot that. I was told when I was in year nine that I'd never get a D or anything like that. I'd be below that. But since I've had Mr Garvey, I've gone well up. Show you working out. Gain little bits of marks even if the answer isn't right. I was really not confident about getting a C, but I think Sir, because he told me I could get it as well, he was saying you, you, everyone in here will get a C, and he explained to me how that I was confident that I would. So the decimal places start where? Perfect, after the decimal point, that's your first I know when I get positive feedback, I feel valued, and that's the feeling I'd like them to have when they're in class. That's perfect, well done. So it's the break, that's perfect. Well, so couldn't get it any better than that. So, uh, <laughs> right. and I truly believe that the relationship between the teacher and the student is the key factor at, to ultimate success. But for Dennis, instilling oh, yeah. self-belief extends beyond the classroom. How's your maths this year? Yes, good, yeah? Yeah. Oh, Thank you, Sam. You say all the right things. <laughs> Luke's part of the Study Plus class we've introduced this year in Year 10, a support for maths and English. And uh, I do the maths with Luke, and his maths has come on tremendously well. He's just had his GCSE module yeah. test. That went well. And, yeah, and it's, a, and it's as a result of the work his maths teacher has done with him, the result of the work I've done with him. But keeping in contact again, as you see now, inside and outside of the class, and touching base and making them feel that they're not just a mathematician to them, they're a whole person to this all. Helping keep track of all GCSE students is a complex computerised data collection system. But for the school, there are some students of special interest. Particular emphasis for me in terms of using the data is to highlight um, the students who are on the CD borderline. And we call those students our, our key marginal students. They're really the, the battleground for us, if you like, in terms of some of the key indicators for success for the school. We'll track those youngsters, we'll look very closely at their individual subjects, see how they're getting on in individual subjects and put interventions in place to support them. Thank you, Rachel. A key intervention is the motivation scheme in which a rotating group of CD borderline students are marked on how motivated they appear. You're on a max there, aren't you? Yeah. Well done. Once a fortnight, the highest scorers are honoured at a special ceremony. You're on for a maximum as well. All right, you could be up for the big prize on Friday. Well done. They score zero, one or two. Zero means they have not achieved as they normally do. One is up to their usual level of achievement. And two, they've gone beyond their level of achievement. And the teacher scores it at the end of the lesson. Well done, Ali. Excellent once again. Well done. Well done, Alfie. We often get a lot of children over a two-week period, which is 50 lessons, scoring 100 points, which is a maximum whereas they wouldn't normally perhaps push themselves as hard. And that will have knock-on benefits um, come the summer because they will achieve perhaps more than they might have achieved without it. It's a fantastic scheme. Before, you don't really know that people are, like, watching how well you're doing the lessons. Like, you don't realise that the teacher's, like, working out if you're motivated or not. But now, um, I'm kind of trying harder because I know that 
they're like going to mark me on it. Right, okay, team. Um, I have got your test results here today, as promised, um, from the test you did recently. Do you want to put your hand up if you think you're on the screen? Top eight names. Have some confidence. Put your name up if you think you're on the screen. One, two, three, four. Come on, let's have more. Five. But one of the strategies I use is regular testing, particularly as they come near to the GCSEs, um, as it promotes their self-confidence to see themselves doing well, particularly when I do a PowerPoint presentation and put a number of the children's uh, scores on the board. And there's even canned clapping thrown in to boost morale. Third place is Catherine at 70. Second is Cheryl at 71. The simple fact of them seeing their names in lights um, as having succeeded makes their self-confidence grow. For those who aren't on there, it often makes them want to get their names on there. Now, I'm going to pause it there because I want you to put your hand up if you think you're top. If you think you are top. George, good, I always like your confidence. <laughs> well done. All right, I'm absolutely delighted at who it is because um, this person has often felt they don't do very well in tests, they don't achieve well in maths, and finally, as I always say to you, I think the penny is finally dropping with a lot of you, and hopefully this will drop for this young person as well. The person that was top of the class for the first time ever is... Well done, Dean. Dean, who's come out top this time, is a surprise to the class. He's struggled all year in his maths, and for the first time now, he has seen himself in front of everybody else as being a high achiever within the class, and from here, he can only go on and get better and better. I didn't expect to be anywhere on the board. Well done, Dean. That was tremendous for you. I hope that'll do confidence the world of good coming top. It makes me feel that I can get the good grade in the GCSE. I think it's good, it like, shows you who's like, doing well and who needs to improve. It gets like, something, it's something to prove for and like, work for, because you want your name on the board. The tests are also used to encourage a competitive spirit. You are top in the last exam, weren't you? Well, he beat you, Luke, just. A bit more working out from you and you'd have been up there, you see. But it's only one mark, though. It would have been closer. It would have been very close. All right, which is, it must be encouraging for you, though. You think yeah, about it next no, time. Yeah, but well, I should have been top. Next time, Luke, next time. March the 18th, yes? Yeah, that'd be a sort of um, try and beat each other on like, the tests, get highest grades in that. I mean, now and then we do with some bets, but. You don't win on the about it. Yeah, I do sometimes. No, you don't. Anyone actually gets as far as another But yeah, it motivates us to like, Those two will not beat, beat each other. Yeah, beat each other. And we get more work done. Last year, we couldn't understand much. We didn't pay any attention, did we? Was there, was a, there was a group of us that was just messing around. But this year, it's all changed because Mr. Garvey made us realise that it's our decision what we get out of maths. Whether we want to get a C or a D, it's up to us. It was, we weren't sitting together at one point, and I uh, stopped really doing work, and my, one, my grades went back to E. But then uh, when we sat next to together, it shot, shot to a C again, so... So I realises that our competition is actually working. Shame after winner, if you know. <laughs> no, you don't. Unusually, all students at Greenshaw must take a statistics GCSE. Its overlap with maths has helped boost results in both subjects. It was a real benefit to students because it meant for just a small increase in the teaching time devoted to mathematics. They had two GCSEs to work for rather than a single one and they found it was really helpful to have the two things integrated together. We've got 60 Until recently, resources like textbooks had dictated how maths topics were taught. We changed it so that the schemes of work were based around learning objectives first and foremost. We were then able to help teachers collectively work together by organising the resources we had, which corresponded directly to our new schemes of work. These resources are often bought in, but more importantly, staff are encouraged to develop their own. It gives members of staff a sense of ownership over the process. It means that the teachers themselves feel far more motivated and enthusiastic in their teaching. And if you have better teaching, what you get is far more motivated children. As a result of that, of course, their results improve. But when teachers aren't there, students can still work towards improving their grades via the school's managed learning environment. With the MLE, I've been able to get from an A to an A star because there is harder subjects to tackle for an A star that aren't always that easy to learn in a classroom situation. But with the MLE, I'm able to access online resources to learn the A-star subjects. So, 
0.7 recurring, which was X, is equivalent to 7 over 9. It's as if I've got a teacher in front of me explaining a subject to me with an interactive whiteboard and it even sets questions that I can try out so I know how to use that subject in the exam. Multiply by 100, subtract to get 45, and then rearrange to get X and cancel your fraction. Daniel's hard work has paid off. Today he's one of 40 children invited to celebrate their excellent mock GCSE results. Well done, you 11. It's uh, great to see you this lunch, and I hope it's a way of actually just uh, making yourself feel good about yourself in terms of what you've been doing recently. What do you think about the lunch? Good idea? It's a great yeah. idea. Excellent. How does it make you feel? Happy and recognised for my achievements. Good, and so you should be. You've worked very hard. John needs to shoot off some of that. But the prospect of a free lunch isn't the only incentive for doing well. I motivate them by rewarding them with some vouchers where uh, every student that hits their target grade will receive a, a £1 voucher and every student that exceeds their target grade will, will, will get a £2 voucher. So it's had a really, really motivational effect. My personal view is that if we're having to invest a little bit of money in terms of their motivation, I think it is a very small price to pay for what is, uh, what is an amazing outcome. How much did you get? 17. Yeah, I think you got the most out of any student in the school, actually, so you did really, really well. Egg mayonnaise are lovely. And they are the business. Yeah, go for it. Students value it massively because they know that we value them, and that is core to what we're doing. Brilliant. It's the day of the motivational award ceremony, and the stakes are high. Up for grabs is £50 worth of vouchers for each member of the winning team. You are very important to us, and there's a very specific reason why you're important to us. We work with a whole range of groups of youngsters across your year group. You are special in one particular way in that we've highlighted you as students who potentially could get those five, six, seven C grades or above, which opens so many doors in your future. Equally, without motivation and without effort and without the support of your teachers, you might just slip the other side of the line. You might not quite get those five Cs. Now's an opportunity for us to see, in terms of motivation, how well you have done over the last couple of weeks. So, which team has won? Who has got the most points? In top place, with 82%, we'll have a big reaction, Mr Garvey's group. <laughs> Well, it proves that I'm motivated because I got a good score on that, and so I'll hopefully try and beat that next week. I'll try and beat my score again. Get a better score and win it again, hopefully. And well done to this man, Mr. Garvey. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Round of applause. I was delighted. The team pulled together, and that's why we won. It's a team effort, really. So I'm just the manager.